All right, we are kicking off the series you guys have all been waiting for. We are starting Archbang Boot Camp. And in this series, I'm going to take you step by step through Archbang Linux. We're going to convert it to a full Arch install. And this is going to make it easier for those of you intermediates who are looking to try Arch but had a little bit of difficulty in the past. And um, over the past week, I've had plenty of time to become an expert on this because I've had to reinstall Arch Linux almost 10 times. And I did both Arch and Arch Bang. So believe me when I tell you, I've had a chance to really uh, run myself through the ringer on this one. It was a wonderful learning experience. And we're going to start this series right now on Spatry's Cup of Linux. All right, let's get started. First, whenever you're using um, or attempting to use Arch, I cannot stress enough, you really need to try this out in a virtual machine first. And the reason I say that is because of the fact that um, it's easy to mess things up and you really don't want to mess it up on your uh, main computer. You need a little bit of a chance to uh, get through the process and everything. And so the first thing I'm going to have you guys do is point your web browser over to, there we go, over to archbang.org. And this is where you'll get a copy of this. And uh, the download button is right over here. Okay, now you will need to select a version for your type of architecture. If you're running a 686, get that version. It's only 423 megs, so it doesn't take long to download. Or uh, x86-64 for you 64-bit users. Today, I am reviewing Archbang, and I'm running the 64-bit version in VirtualBox. Let's go ahead and have a look at that. All right, here it is. We're running Tint 2 on the bottom. It's got Conky on the left-hand side of the screen, which is a nice little... Um, system monitor plus it tells you the shortcut keys that you can use it's highly configurable and modifiable okay this uses open box all right and so you have to right click on an empty spot on the desktop to access the menu first there is install we're going to do that in the next episode in applications you have accessories catfish character map a disk utility file manager calculator leaf pad parsley and x archiver in graphics you get a g key in internet, you get Aurora, which is an unbranded version of Firefox, and you get transmission for all you SOPA lovers out there who are downloading illegal and pirated material. In Office, you get Zathora, which is a very lightweight document viewer. In Other, you get AR&R, which is actually a display manager for uh, changing screen resolution and that sort of thing. You get the Adobe Flash Player plugin configurator. You can customize the look and feel. Openbox Configuration Manager. Pint, uh, panel tint to uh, preferred applications and a tint wizard in sound and video you get dead beef audio player gnome m player and xf burn for burning your discs and then of course in system tools you get batty system profiler and bench benchmark and you get a very basic terminal that doesn't even allow copy and pasting the rxvt unicode all right and then of course you can navigate to places recent files, and then of course you can adjust preferences within this particular operating environment should you choose to operate it the way it is. Now, obviously we are going to change that. We're not going to be running this. So in the next episode, I'm actually going to show you how to install this. The installer is a lot easier than actually using Arch's installer, which is why I recommend using the Archbang installer, because it will save you some time. That way you can spend more time setting it up and configuring it the way you want, rather than burying your faces in uh, too many uh, configuration files and manually going through and altering those. But for some of you, you're going to have to do that. That's what I had to do on my system so that I could get comp his and all the special effects working on my system. Plus, after doing a full update on the system, I had um, 
I had to uh, manually configure a lot of files because of my ATI card. And plus, I wanted all the special effects in the eye candy. And I'll actually cover all of those things as well. One thing you need to note, if you're going to commit to using Arch or ArchBang, you must read the documentation on the website. Both ArchBang and Arch have good websites with which to obtain information. And as a matter of fact, I've spent more time on the Arch website than I have on ArchBang's site because everything that I've been doing in this operating system actually has, you know, since I've done the update, I've actually converted this into a full Arch system. All right, if you thought this was useful, comment, like, and subscribe. Also, Google+, Plus, Facebook, or Twitter. Leave your comments down below. I need to know what you would like to see me install in ArchBang. Uh, I need to know um, if you're running into any difficulties. But also remember, before you ask, please make sure you check the documentation on the website because I'm not always going to be able to answer. I'm still relatively new at this myself. Okay, well, I've got a lot of work to do here, so uh, let me go ahead and get to that, and we'll see you next time.